just just perfect perfect all oh did you go fishing no fish you didn't cast the net on the right on the left side like Should change sides. Should listen to the Lord, shouldn't he, Donna? <laughs> uh, well, 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 well. Someone uh, have a testimony tonight you want to share with us? I mean, it was such a beautiful day. You surely somebody's got something to brag about the Lord for. If not, you're going to put me on the spot to try to take up 40 minutes, I guess. Then we'll be hard, will it? All right. Well, we're, we're going to get into the study tonight. We are going to try to wrap this up this evening. Uh, and once again, we're uh, in First Thessalonians. Uh, we've been talking in this section uh, since chapter 2 verse 17 uh, about these converts and their present and, and future welfare uh, uh, the last section that we've been in has been uh, Paul talking about steps leading up to these converts entire sanctification uh, verses 5 through 12 or 24 um, and in those verses we we, lo we looked at uh, the fact that the you know how converts and how how the the church uh, uh, looks at their pastors and talked about things concerning their pastor uh, we also in verses 14 through 20 we saw uh, Paul give us advice on how uh, Christians should treat one another concerning one another uh, and, and all those things uh, and uh, last last time we met uh, we talked about a couple topics first one was of course how we look at what Paul had to say about converts and and us uh, concerning sundry or various or assorted matters however you want to look at that uh, and we followed that up by looking at what Paul had to say about questionable things as he gives the converts instructions there and and finally that last time we talked about advice concerning wrong things uh, the bottom line is God's word gives us direction for everything. You know, I, I can remember, you know, when when I wasn't serving the Lord and and uh, uh, you know, never having a child before, and and I can remember me saying at least, man, I wish I had an instruction manual for this. <laughs> I did. I just wasn't in a place in my life where I was using it uh, it gives us instructions doesn't it it gives us in, you know uh, you know uh, basic instructions before leaving earth bible you know uh, that using that acronym acronym uh, basic instructions before leaving earth and and if we if we want to make it to heaven if we if we're saved and we we uh, want to serve the lord with all of our heart uh, we need to be in, we need to be getting the instructions from this book and applying it to our lives. It doesn't do us any good to to read it and not apply it. We we've got to take God's word and and apply it to our lives. And so, uh, you know, there you have it. Uh, concerning wrong things, uh, questionable things, uh, how we how we do sundry matters, how we treat one another how we treat pastors and all of this is the Christian life and if we're ever going to move in to entire sanctification 
we've got to be living that life. Uh, God is not going to sanctify a heart that is out of will in an area of our Christian walk. We mentioned, I think, Sunday about the fact that we, we have to desire to grow in the Lord. We have to desire to get closer to God. We have to desire to be in His Word and, and study His Word and, and apply it to our lives uh, or else he's not going to bless us in any any way uh, I read a thing on uh, uh, from the publishing house uh, I was looking through for our next study I was trying to find uh, the dialogue books uh, Hunger for God I don't think they have them anymore uh, so not sure what we're going to do there but anyhow uh, I, I looked at this one book and it gives you a sample page and I, I looked at that sample page and and uh, it, it got got talking about some of the language we used to use as as church people uh, the old man you know you don't hear that much any long anymore you know you got to die out to the old man you know uh, you, you don't hear a whole lot of that uh, you know uh, pray through you know or <laughs> Uh, the unknown bundle. You know, have, have you heard? You've heard that one, right? The unknown bundle. We gotta. We not not only gotta die out to the, the things that we, you know, know about right now in our lives when we're sanctified. We we've gotta we gotta surrender all that to God, but we also gotta surrender the unknown bundle. The things that we don't know about tomorrow. The bundle of things in our life that's going to come even when we're sanctified holy it's going to happen we got to we got to die out to those things and say lord you're going to handle that amen you're going to handle when you hear the word cancer you're going to handle that lord you know and and so forth and so on and and so uh, a lot of a lot of terminology uh, the bottom line is that there comes a place in our lives where we need to get on the meat and let God do a deeper work in our hearts and our lives. And so tonight we will finish this, I think, great book of, uh, of Paul's writing uh, by looking at one of the, the greatest texts on sanctification. And, and then we'll look at closing with Paul's closing words and in verses uh the, the last two verses of the of the chapter so let's let's first look this evening uh about the second work of grace definitely set forth verses 23 and 24 the second work of grace definitely set forth that's that's another that's another term you don't hear a whole lot today second work of grace second blessing you know, you don't you don't hear a lot of that today. Uh, I, I don't know why. Uh, I didn't read the whole article, but I thought it was interesting. I will need to go back and read the rest of it. But anyhow, someone somebody read those verses for us, twenty three and twenty four. Pray God of peace, sanctify you holy, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calls on you, who also will do it. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mike. Here's here's where we're at. Paul is writing this book to converts. Right? We've talked about that this whole study. We brought up the time and time again about the converts, the converts, the converts, the converts, the converts. In other words, he's talking to Christians, born-again Christians, men and women, boys and girls, who we don't know, that have made a decision for Christ and asked Him into their hearts and forsook their sins. They were tired of sinning. They were tired of... They, they, they wanted something better in their lives. And... They heard the message of the gospel where Christ died on the cross to set them free 
of the guilt and the shame that sin brings into our lives. When you when we do things wrong, you don't need the Bible unless we get to the place where we talked about people being you know lost all sensitivity to the the Holy Spirit and what so forth and so on Sunday night. But the bottom line is when we do something wrong, we don't need the Bible to tell us we done something wrong. When I stole a candy bar from from the corner store when I was a little boy, I knew that was wrong. There was something inside me that said, that's wrong. All those things I'd done from that period of time to the day I gave my heart back to the Lord in Fairmont First Church, all that weight of guilt and shame was built up in my heart and my life. The drinking, all the, all the things that I got involved in that I knew were wrong. I knew they were wrong. And it weighed down, it weighed on me. And when I went to that altar and I said, Lord, forgive me, come into my... Whew, what a weight. Now, maybe a lot of people might look at my life and say, well, you really, I mean, you didn't do anything really, really bad. You didn't murder anybody, blah, 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 blah. Well, it weighed down on me. <laughs> it weighed down on me. And I didn't have to go through every one of those little sins and say, Lord, forgive me. I said, Lord, forgive me for my sins. And and he came and he, 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 he saved me. He set me free from that weight and that bondage. Uh, and so I didn't need God's word to tell me Maybe it was my training. I don't know. I mean, I wasn't in church a whole lot when I was little. But I think every human being is born with an emptiness inside of them that only God can fill. And we try to fill it with drugs, alcohol, whatever, 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 whatever. Okay? And it doesn't work. Well... That's who Paul's talking to, a group of people that made that decision for Christ. Just on the surface, without digging into this scripture tonight, Paul is saying, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. He's talking to born-again Christians. And he's telling them something else they need. Right? I mean, he's saying, and now may the God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and, and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you just look at that on the surface, you've got to say, there is something else God wants to do for me. This isn't some doctrinal teaching from 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 a a group of people who 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 have lost it. This is biblical teaching, doctrinal teaching that Jesus came not only to die on the cross to forgive me of my sins, but to cleanse me and keep me blameless until the second coming, until he comes again or until I die and meet him. That's just on the surface. Any born-again Christian should be able to grasp that. And as a born-again Christian, as we said, I think, Sunday night, maybe it was Sunday morning, I forgive me for not remembering my context of everything, but every born-again Christian that it has the carnal natures in them, that carnal nature, when it continues to make you want to do things you don't want to do and not do the things you know you should do and it keeps roaring its old ugly head up in your life and you can't get victory over this you can't get victory over that when God is saying here he can he can keep you blameless until the coming of his coming again how can I be blameless if I continue to go back and do things I've done before so 
So just reading the scripture tonight tells me that God wants to do a second work of something in your life as born again Christians. Now I've already I've already said it, but it's worth repeating. And that fact is that this passage is considered one of the greatest texts on entire sanctification or sanctification. It's it's its special message is significant. When you or I know to do something and don't do it, that the scripture says becomes sin. To him to know to do good and not do it to him, that is sin. And so when we get light on something in our lives and we don't move forward or we don't correct it, then we're heading down a dark path. We begin heading down a dark path. If, if I'm walking in a bright light and where's my shadow going to be? If I'm walking into a back bright light, where's my shadow going to be? It's going to be behind me, right? So darkness is behind me. As I walk in the light, as he is in the light, darkness is behind me. I should be walking in, in, in light. I should be, there should be no darkness that I'm walking in. And so when, when the Lord or the scripture or a message or a study or whatever, when, when that reveals something to me that is light... I need to respond to it or else I'm going to be starting to turn away from the light and I'm going to, oh, I'm getting a glimpse of darkness over here in my peripheral vision. You understand what I'm saying? The light's coming here. I reject the light, so I'm turning away from the light. Maybe not fully. Maybe I'm not downright committed adultery or, or, or murder or something, but I'm rejecting what God's Word is saying. And so... I, 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 I turn and, and the more I turn what I, I see more and more of my shadow and before long I'm walking in my shadow and not in the light I'm walking in darkness and not in light and, and so as born again Christians the carnal nature helps me to understand that I need a deeper work that I need something else in my life. And and its purpose uh, in the following discourse uh, it brings out what we need. And it begins with the truth that we must grab a hold of if we are truly going to experience the second work of grace in our very lives. The truth answers the question of how or who does the sanctifying who does the sanctifying verse 23 in the very who come on God of peace this this shows us this teaches us that sanctification is a divine work. The very God of peace. This isn't something you and I do. Uh, and, 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 and therefore, it's not the same as what we're to do. You and I are to do the consecrating. God is the God, the God of peace, does the sanctifying. He does the work. And may the God of peace. Uh, it, it's like consecrating is getting on the operating table and the surgery is taken care of by God. We got to get on the table and let God do the operation. He's, he's the great physician. He's the one that needs to do the work in our hearts as born again Christians. Uh, that is a work that is done in believers and not in sinners. Paul is talking to the converts. He's not talking to the sinner. The sinner needs to get their lives straight. <laughs> the sinner needs to be saved.
souls or individuals must know the peace with God before they before God will manifest himself to them as the God of peace and entire sanctification. So in regeneration, we come to know peace with God. When that weight lifted off of me, I was at peace. I knew if I died at that moment, I would go to heaven. <laughs> and all that guilt and shame, when you carry that around in your life, and you 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 get relief from that you're at peace peace with God you can stand before him and say I love you Lord I've, I've, I've given you my heart but entire sanctification Paul is talking about those who are saved and for God to manifest himself to them as the God of peace we have to get on the operating table and allow him to do the surgery that when God comes to a soul to sanctify it he comes in the most soothing way possible and he comes as the God of peace Shalom Right, we talked about that a few Sundays ago, and in the morning message, actually, I do remember that. <laughs> but shalom, it, it's it's not an it's not necessarily outside; it's inside. Peace that comes from within, and and he comes in a way that that changes our hearts and our lives, and so. What might the next question be for those who uh, have what is the nature of the second work of grace? The God of peace, what? Sanctify you. Once again, he is doing the work. To sanctify is a work of of purification the words to sanctify in the Latin, English, Greek and Hebrew have this meaning the sphere in which is, the, is wrought in the heart the cleansing is from inbred sin its nature is that it is also instantaneously wrought and the verb to sanctify is in the aorist tense, denoting an action instantly done, completely then and there. A lot, of, lot said right there. A lot said right there. The bottom line is, when we are sanctified, it is instantly. Scared you, didn't I? Some of you. Huh? Some of you didn't weren't looking <laughs> it's instant when you're saved you're instantly you you are you are justified you're you're looked at just if you've never sinned by god you're adopted into the family of god instantly all this take regeneration it all takes part boom instantly it's a second definite work of grace it's complete you don't have to go tomorrow and ask god to forgive you again unless you're going out and get back and sin again okay don't get me wrong <laughs> but it's it's a it's a definite work of grace and sanctify you to sanctify you it's a work of purification it's the old man dying <laughs> okay the, the old term the, we don't hear it's 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 a uh, a second definite work of grace where God comes in he's got you on the operating table he goes inside of you he pulls out that old carnal nature if you will and he 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 fills your heart completely with the holy spirit the, that that is wrought by by your emotion or by your attitude your your behavior uh, and and this cleansing is from the inbred sin which is what drives me to sin. And where does the inbred sin come from? 
original sin. All the way back from what Adam and Eve done in the garden. When, when, when they sinned, human, everything fell. The human race, uh, it was marred. Uh, and, and, and why was Jesus free from inbred sin? Because he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He wasn't conceived by man. So he didn't have the inbred. He was the second Adam, if you will. The scripture says it talks about. He's the second Adam. First Adam failed. And Adam, Adam, if if I remember right, and correct me if anybody if you know differently, but it's not just referring to a man, it's referring to human race. Okay. Uh and so that cleansing takes place. Its nature is that it is instantaneously wrought. It's instantaneously cleansed. And we are filled with the Holy Spirit, which empowers us now to do the things I am instructed to do and stay away from the things that God shows me not to do. It's what empowers. Acts 1.8 you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be witnesses unto me into Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Okay? It's that power that we sing about, and there's power in the blood. Uh, wonder-working power. And so, it's wrought on instantaneously, and that the verb to sanctify is in the aorist tense, which in the Greek or whatever, it, it donates an action that is instantaneous, instantly done and completely then and there. He doesn't need to do any more cleansing in my heart. He, he, he wants me to grow, okay, and and. I've not arrived. What, what's what's the old saying? Saved, sanctified, and petrified, or something like that. Okay, no, I I got to continue to grow, or I can turn away from God's will. Okay, and and the extent of it is what? Come on, God of peace sanctify you to the what extent? Holy. W-H-O-L-L-Y. What does holy mean? Complete. Through and through. Head to toe. Inside out. A complete work. May the God of peace sanctify, get you on the operating table, you're consecrated, you know it's what God wants to do in your heart and your life, so you're jumping up on the table. He's going to sanctify you He's going to cleanse instantaneously, empower and cleanse and, and bring out the old carnal nature or the in, inbred sin instantaneously. And he's going to do it completely and holy to the extent. Holy. Two Greek words here are, are used in this text to donate the extent. First of all, it's holistius, okay? H O L O T E T E L E I S. This means to advance from imperfect beginning to completion. <laughs> he began a good work in you. He who began a good work in you, right? Okay. Uh, the fir this is the first word used in the meaning implies a work of cleansing begun in regeneration completed now in entire sanctification he who began a good work in you right back here is going to complete it here he's going to he's going to sanctify you wholly the second word is H O L O K A L L A R O N. It means to it means to perfect in all parts or restore to the original condition. 
I told you about my 1969 GTO 400 four barrel cruiser. How many times? You can probably sick and tired of hearing of it. I got rid of it mainly because I could not afford to restore it to the original condition. And I hated watching it just sit there and go to rust. And so I sold it. Also had a boat I wanted to buy with the money I got from it. But that's another story. <laughs> yeah, that was a big mistake, Gene, believe me. <laughs> when you restore something, you want it to be like new. Amen? If you restore, uh, I've seen a, I don't know, some kind of roaster or something, Chrissy and I seen, uh, I think it was Sunday, coming back from, from her Mother Day dinner. I did take her out to dinner. I treated her nice on it. And this thing, it was, it was an awesome car, but it had not been, didn't look like a lick of thing had been done to it to restore it back to the, if that thing was restored, I, I mean, maybe it wasn't, I, I don't know. Maybe it was something the guy just made. I don't know. But it was awesome. Look, it had it, no no hood. It like ro, ro, I guess roasters didn't they? Look, no hood and big wheels and yeah. So it, it was that. And uh, I went by the guy up here at the red light and I gave him a thumbs up. You know. <laughs> but if that thing was restored back to the original condition, wow. My 1969 GTO. There's a there's an auction thing that's on one of the channels. Sometimes I can't remember the name of the auction show, but I've seen it's a car auction show, and and I've seen 1969 GTOs go for forty fifty thousand dollars on that channel before. When you want when you want something back to its original condition. You, you, you restore it. Jesus came to restore us back to what Adam was like in the Garden of Eden. The only thing different is we know sin. Adam didn't when he was created. And you can't take that away on this side of glory. Uh, because the old enemy is still running around seeking whom he may devour. Uh, and, and so, uh, to sanctify you all parts and restore you back to your original condition before the fall in the Garden of Eden. And so the two words together mean to sanctify in every part and completely in every part. Holy. <laughs> And from from the from the very beginning to now, he sanctifies, and he sets us apart. At, at salvation, he does that. He sets us apart to do his will, and this is a place where we come to in our lives, that the very God of peace may sanctify you, holy. And the extent of the cleansing is equal to the extent of the presence of pollution, of sin in the life. And and so he he whatever is there he sanctifies. Uh, Romans five twenty it says this. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. What's that mean to you? What, what's that saying to you? The law entered that the offense might abound. Somebody, you got another version, somebody got a NIV or New King James maybe, or somebody look up Romans 5.20 for us, other than the King James. Anybody got any thoughts on that, what it, what it means? I think what it means is God gave us a law Sin did abound. So where sin abounded, grace is much more abound. <laughs> he, 
he wanted to make sure we knew what sin was. We, we couldn't come up with the excuse, well, I didn't know that. Thou shalt not commit adultery. I, I didn't know that. You know, the Ten Commandments. I, I didn't know that. So he gave the law that the offense might abound, that you would know what sin is for sure. But, as Gary said, where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Greater is grace than sin. And, and so, no matter what your sin is, grace can take care of it if you give it to God. Okay? Completely and wholly, from, from the moment... From the moment we are we are saved, that's that's what happens. And those two Greek words, holy, that remedy is is equal to whatever sin. Uh, grace is greater than my sin. Shall we go ahead and continue to sin? Paul says, "God forbid." He says, "Shall we continue in our sin?" God forbid. Well, grace is greater than sin. But God forbid if you ask God to forgive you and you continue into sin. And Romans Romans is a great book and talks about that in a very down-to-earth ways. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Uh, Romans 8.1, I think it is. So, what is the... I mean, come on. Are we not living in a world where everybody says, what's in it for me, <laughs> right? What's in it for me? Okay, God, you you want me to do this surgery have this surgery done so i'm going to jump up on the table and you're going to do this work in me and you're going to do it fully and completely and 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 no you know no, no scar tissue left soul or spirit soul and body and i pray god your whole spirit soul and body it realigns things in our lives with this. Spirit being the highest or the most prominent position. Walk in the spirit, not in the body, okay? Not in the flesh. And so he rearranges things in our life where the Spirit is the most important thing in my life now. Hello? I'm no longer on the throne. You know, you, how many of you have seen the, the, the bumper sticker, Jesus is my co-pilot? <laughs> he doesn't want to be your co-pilot. He wants to be your pilot, if you look at it that way. He, he, you know, he doesn't want to just be first in your life. He wants to be your life. It's not a checklist that we mark off. You know, he's first and second. And, okay, no, he in my work, he's my life. In my in my home, he's my life. In my in my church, he's my life. In my social life, he's my life. Everything revolves around him and what he wants me to do in those settings. So it readjusts human beings, man's being, who we are. So that, that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that, rec or that, uh, that identifies with the Holy Spirit of our lives is in line with the Holy Spirit. And third, not only does he want to do that, but I pray, God, that your whole, body, your whole spirit, soul, and body be what? Preserved. What, do you, what, is, what, is, what is it when we preserve something? I mean, it, think, think about canning. Okay? 
uh, when I done, I talked about pickles there, the cucumbers and stuff the other day. You, you got to put something in there to preserve it, right? You, you got to add, uh, believe it or not, some of the, I mean, I think a bay leaf is what I put in there. Uh, of course, the brine is made up of vinegar and, and water. Uh, huh? Yeah, pickling spice. And then, believe it or not, now I don't, pickling spice is different than what I'm going to tell you, if I remember right. Calcium. You, you, you know pool shock? You, you, you ever, anybody ever take care of a pool before? They put pool shock little white crystals and to shock your pool to get rid of all the bacteria and you put some pool shock in in these pickles and what it does is it keeps it crunchy and it's really good and then I put some usually some red pepper in it uh, the uh, the ground pepper red pepper you know uh, they're really and not hot they're not hot no, they're not hot. Ask Chrissy. They're not hot. She doesn't like anything hot. But they are good. And and so what God is wanting to do, He's wanting to preserve you with a grace that will keep you from spoiling until Jesus comes again. <laughs> isn't that great? Isn't isn't that wonderful? He's 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 gonna can you if he <laughs> If you will, <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna put you in that jar. He's gonna tighten that lid and gonna heat you up until you yeah <laughs> you hear that lid pop. <laughs> but he wants to preserve us, and I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, you and I can take this to the bank. We can say, thus saith the Lord. We can say, if God said it, well, let me, let's just read the scripture. Faithful is he that calleth you. He calls each and every one of us to this can I say to us tonight this is a Bible study but it's also a place where God can do a work in your heart and life if he's not done this yet he wants to cleanse your heart he's faithful the God of peace is wanting us to get on the operating table and consecrate our lives and trust Him to do a surgery internally in our heart and our life where He began a work back here at salvation and He's wanting to complete it right now and sanctify you wholly. That means everything instantaneously. Empower you. Take out the carnal sin. And not only that, but He says that I want to pray for you that God would, uh, would, 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 your, uh, would, and I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved, be canned, be ready at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, either by death or by the second coming. And I'm telling you what, church, faithful is he who calleth you because he's going to do it. He will do it. We just have to have the faith to step out and believe what Scripture says and to trust God to do a work that only he can do God's faithfulness he is you may not have been faithful your whole life to God but God has always been faithful to you and there's no one here going to tell me he's not but you preacher you don't understand what he did in my life and how I lost this or how that happened or, no I don't understand that but you know sometimes God needs to get our attention And, and good things happen to, to, to bad people and bad things happen to good people. Why? Don't blame God. Blame sin. It began in the Garden of Eden. God did not create you and me to live 
a life of sin. But he gave us a choice to love him or not to love him. He didn't program us like computers where it does whatever the, the keystroke person does. Whatever is entered, that's what the computer does. He didn't create you and me to love him by a computer chip. He created you and me to love him by free will. And we were blinded by the enemy and, and, and we fell. And because of that, good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people. And, and I know that's simplified when you're going through life's tragedies. But my friend, God can bring something good out of the bad that happens in our lives if we just continue to trust Him. Here in, in these verses, verse 20, in this verse, Paul tells us the converts, and he, he, again, he's telling us also that the faithfulness of God in the sanctified life, it is the field of his faithfulness. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's got a football field, and it's a football field of faithfulness, if you will. What fully belongs to him, that he faithfully guards. This is his. This is his work, and he guards it. And heart purity is the door to his faithfulness. When you and I give our heart completely and totally to God, we can see his faithfulness in a different manner than maybe ever before. Which brings us then to verse 25 through 28. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss and holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that is that this epistle be read unto the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Here we have Paul's closing words to this entire book. A very important book. Why? Because because it tells the converts how to live their lives, what they're to do, how they're to respond, and it brings them to a second definite work of grace in their lives. And like I said, this is a Bible study, but if God is speaking to your heart tonight, maybe maybe it's to be entirely sanctified. Maybe it's to, you know, you, maybe he's pointed out something else in your life. We can pray. We can we can stop and pray, Amen. There's there's nothing to be embarrassed about. There's no, it's just us. But here in these closing words of this epistle, Paul requested the prayers of the converts in his behalf. But he also requested that this whole epistle be read at one time to the holy brethren. This epistle was written not just for the church. In Thessalonica this epistle was written for every church every body of believers uh, the epistle like the Christian life begins with grace if you go back to chapter 1 verse 1 Paul introduces himself and Timotheus and Silvanus and he, he says unto the church in Thessalonica which is in God the Father and in our Lord Jesus Christ he says grace be unto you he starts this book out with grace and he ends it he concludes it with grace and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you <laughs> grace grace God's grace there's nothing in life that God's as, as Gary mentioned in Romans 820 or you know 820 it abounds more why does why why can't some people face death in their dying moments because personally God's grace abounds I couldn't handle that. Well, you not you're not in that situation. They are. And I've seen a many of Christians 
where grace was sufficient. And many are saints. And so none of this church can happen without God's grace. Not the work of salvation, not the work of entire sanctification. That's why we call a second definite work of grace. The first one, Christ has happened in your life, right? You realize you was a sinner, right? You realize the that the only way you was going to make heaven your home is to for, for, get forgiveness of your sin. The second crisis in your life happens when the carnal nature starts stirring things up and saying to you, this isn't right, Toby. You know? You know, the little angels on your shoulder, you know, yeah, why don't you go ahead and do it, Toby? No, Toby, don't do it. Uh, 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 back and forth, back and forth. Okay, come on. That's that's the old nature inside of you working against you. He's wanting to do this. But God's over here saying, I want you to do this. This guy get, needs to get wiped out of your life. You come to a crisis point in your life where you've got to make a decision to get rid of this guy. The inside guy. He's inside. He's not out here. He's inside. And so you jump up on the arp and table. It's a cancer. Okay? It's a cancer. Okay, God, I'm consecrating myself to you. And here I am. And he comes down with a scalpel and he surgically removes that cancer and pulls it out. And then he fills it up with his love. Perfect love. And it's only by grace. It's only by knowing this is what I want or I need and saying to yourself, this is what I want. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. I've enjoyed the study. I hope you have. Any thoughts, any questions tonight before we close? No, the only dumb question there is, folks, is one that's not asked. I may not have an answer for you tonight, but I will get an answer for you if it's one I don't know. Where do you want to go next? Do you want to do a book study, or you want to? I, I, I've got an old. I was, I was talking about a hunger for God. If I could find the, the the books, it would be a great study. It'd be a great study even without student books. But you'd have to you'd have to probably be given the scripture and stuff to look at or something. I don't know. We have to do something there. Uh, but it's a it, it would be a good. Uh, follow up to what we've just studied in, in this this book of First Thessalonians. Uh, do me a favor. Uh, write it down on a piece of paper what you might want to do. Uh, either a book study from the Bible or a dialogue type study uh, where it's a subject more than a, more than a book and and maybe a suggestion on what book you would like to 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 study from, uh, and we'll look at that. And, well, good. I'm, I I appreciate hearing that, Mike. I think it's been a good study. I really do, and I appreciate that. Uh, most of this stuff came from an old <laughs> when we first moved into the parse. Well, not parse, it's into the church when I first started pastoring back in 1999 the the church had a parsonage they were selling and out in the garage was a bunch of old old books and this study <coughs> this study came from I mean the pages are yellow <laughs> they're they're all torn I mean it, 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 but it's it was a, a good study so I I really I really enjoyed doing it
it was it's been good stuff. <coughs> any any thoughts? Yes, sir. I know what we're going to talk on here tonight. You might agree with this, you might not. Before we're saved, we have to say, God wants to do anything to us, we should have to do it. He's not going to force the way on If he's next to us, he's not going to do it. He's not subject to his will. He's not going to do that. He commands us to be holy. He's not going to make us. No. He's given us instructions right here, Gary. It's up to us. Do we want this? Do we? Yeah, you're exactly right. He's not going to force us. And then we ask God to sanctify us. If we meet that criteria, He's going to do it. Yes. If you don't meet that criteria, He's going to do it. Right. I don't think people want to skip being saved and go to God being being sanctified. Can't do that. Can't do that. I'm going to take it more time. Yeah. There's a whole lot of things more said than what was said here tonight. I'm going to take it back. Yeah. <laughs> perfect gentleman. It's a perfect gentleman. If we lose out, we're not hurting him, we're not hurting himself. We don't want to get hurt God. We don't want to change him. What am I doing now? It's not him. He's still going to be gone. But this is something that we've got to go into when we know. Superintendent has had a message on that one time for ministers and mates retreat. And he said, When you're sanctified, you still have some stumps in your life that need to be dug out. And when God reveals that stump to you, you may not see it right now, but all of a sudden, one day you're reading a scripture and it, you know, oh, Galatians 2 20, you know, or whatever. And, and, he points something out to you and you, the Holy Spirit starts saying you know Toby you you got something that's not adding up in this scripture and here's what it is you need to surrender that to him that's the unknown bundle I, what I told him I'd do back here is when he reveals something to me up here I don't question it I surrender it all to him I what freely give and I don't know why we fight that Gary why do we fight that because the old man wants to have his way it's hard it's hard for him to give up the old man wants his way and it's usually something in an attitude or something on the outside that we are is revealed to us Anything else? No, I don't, Gary. I, I, I mean, PK can stop recording or whatever. We can go for another whatever. I mean, if you need to leave, you can leave. But if we, if we got more folks, this is important. The climax of all our, of my whole, the whole study on this book is tonight. 
It's for converts to be entirely sanctified and be kept blameless until the coming of the Lord. And to be kept blameless, you have to give him that unknown bundle. You have to, if he reveals something to you, a wrong attitude or or something you need to do or something you need to say or, you know, then we've got to do that without question. What What's Revelation say to the church? It was, is it Laodicea where he says, uh, I'd rather have you cold or hot because if you're lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. What makes what makes us lukewarm, church? <clears throat> yeah, I could be here every sun, every time the church doors are open, Donna. But if I'm not doing what He shows me to do. I want to become lukewarm. He can work with somebody who's a sinner, cold, and he can work with somebody who's saved and sanctified and on fire for the Lord because they're hot to get things done. They're excited. They're, they're, they know God's work and they see His work in His lives. But we become lukewarm when we don't the sinner listens, uh, the, the hot person listens, but the lukewarm person. And it's a scary place to be. Sometimes we don't even know it. That's why we need to let the Holy Spirit check us. Search me, O God, the Scripture says. Let's close in prayer tonight, unless someone else has anything. I want to ask everybody just to bow their head tonight. I'm, I just feel led to pray this way tonight. And before praying, I, I, I want to, if you, God has spoken to you in some way and manner through this study or tonight would you would you just uh, real quickly up and down with your hand uh, every head bowed and eye closed Pastor Toby I you know God has spoken to me through this study and I'm, I'm, I, I need to make a decision I may not do that tonight but I know my life needs it would you just up quickly with your hand back down Anyone at all? God bless you. I see that hand. Anyone else? God bless you. Any others tonight? God bless you. Oh, Father, we come to the close of a great study, and and Lord, we we love you. We, we know the world that we live in is difficult. The pressures are real. The attacks of the enemy is real. But Lord, we, 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 we talked about it tonight, about where sin abounds, grace abounds more. We've talked about walking in the light as you are in the light. And, and Lord, you've spoken to some tonight, whether it was tonight's study or somewhere through this study, you've, you've spoken to hearts and individuals. And I pray that they make a decision tonight, right now, even coming forward right now if need be, Lord, and, and make a decision to stand up for the things of God in their lives. I know without a doubt that each and every one of us here love you and wants to make heaven their home. But also know how the enemy works. And he's a liar. He's a thief. He's, he's no good. 
and he wants to destroy the church, the family, individuals, and he does everything he can. But I know tonight without a doubt that the Holy Spirit is greater and that the Holy Spirit, as we talked about Sunday, Father, we pray that that, that it would tear down any hard heart, that it would tear down and any anything that is, is blocking the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit working in our hearts and our lives. I pray right now that your blood would 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 penetrate those walls tonight and do the work that God wants in our lives. Forgive us, Father, for when we are laxed. Forgive us for when we we don't do what we want to do and know we need to do and we end up doing the things we don't want to do. But Lord, we know that we can't continue to say that prayer over and over again that we need to make a decision to be entirely sanctified. And I pray that tonight. Whether here, at home, or in the middle of the night, that you would just convict the heart until it surrenders. May we understand the severity of not acting. Father, help us all to walk in this. In Christ's name we pray. And amen. God bless you. God bless you. Appreciate you.